all are welcome to computer class here we are meeting after your vacation i hope all of you must have enjoyed the vacation okay now we will be here to study more things learn more things now here we are starting the second chapter that is computers memory okay now all of you know what is memory memory means it's a power of recollecting the things and which is getting the things which we see which we talk or which we experience are getting stored in our memory and in the uh, human being in cases of human beings the memory is somewhat brain brain's activity okay human body memory system we'll see first brain functions as memory system means whatever we see whatever we experience whatever we read uh, all that is getting stored somewhere in our brain human memory is essential to do day to day things and uh, to recollect the things and behave accordingly or do uh, take the action accordingly brain stores and retrieves information retrieves means whatever is stored it can use it afterwards brain has short and long term memory memory critical compon uh, component okay so now human brain we have seen okay which instructs the human being to do the actions we, human memory we have seen but what about computer computer is also having memory it is also short term and long term memory and how it is measured and what are the functions of this computer's memory all this we are going to learn now what is computer memory memory plays a very important role in a computer it is the basic unit where data and instructions are stored temporarily memory unit Uh, usually consist of one or more chips on the motherboard motherboard means the uh, actual board where all the circuitry is there inside the cpu this memory consist of electronic components a computer system is also equ equ equipped with some additional memory devices which are generally used to store programs applications data and information permanently so in computer memory there are some parts which are having the permanent memory and some uh, some part is of non permanent means it is a temporary memory all that we are going to learn now this see this is computer block diagram you must have learned this in third standard also fourth standard also fifth standard also what is this input processing and output computer works in this three stages what it means it takes the input it takes the input from the user means it takes the instructions what uh, what data uh, it should process which data it should process how it should process what calculation it should do through input devices all those input devices we have learned memory unit and there is a output unit memory unit see it is control unit or the cpu is called the brain of the computer whatever information we are giving to computer it goes to cpu in cpu it is getting segregated means whatever is there whatever variables or information to be stored uh, for temporary purpose per permanent purpose it goes to the memory unit a calculation all the calculation part arithmetic or logic unit arithmetic and logic unit this part does all the calculations and registers are also there which registers some values now this control unit controls the whole process of this sending the uh, uh, data to memory unit sending the data to alu taking the data back to a, uh, from alu or from memory units and uh, process it and give the output this is the function of the control unit all this we have learned here memory unit means whatever uh, results are there 
unless and until it is not given to output devices it, it, these results are residing in the memory unit some variables they are residing in the memory units so memory is very much important in computer case also but how to measure this memory how much memory computer has or how active memory it is uh, having how much active memory it is having or uh, whether it is fast or slow it depends on the memory unit also computer is slow or fast now memory units we will see different things are measured in a specific term or unit like liquids are measured in liters or milliliters whereas uh, solids are measured in grams and kilograms 1 kg rice 1 kg uh, uh, wheat flour or 1 kg wheat or 1 kg grams or something like that we are telling and now for uh, uh, measuring <coughs> uh, milk or uh, any other liquid item we can uh, oil we can uh, use the measurement as liters similarly the computer memory can also be measured in terms of bits and or bytes what is bits what are bytes all that we are going to learn in detail now pay attention properly okay now this memory units byte one byte is equal to one character a character can be a number letter or symbol means it is a collection of alphabets correct one byte consists of eight bits binary digits it's called bits a bit is the smallest unit of information a computer can process this uh, uh, collection of this eight bits becomes one byte okay there is one character in computer keys it is a combination this one byte is a combination of eight bits that is 0 and 1 the bits value may be 0 or 1 means suppose it is one byte it is a combination of zeros and ones see it is shown here eight bits that is 0011101 these are individual bits okay or this eight bits together becomes one byte okay here suppose it is a word of 18 bits that is two bytes it is explained here like this now we'll see this table this table is given in your book also in different format now here one byte is equal to eight bits that is combination of zeros and ones correct whereas one kilobyte is equal to 10241024 bytes okay now one megabyte that is mb is equal to 101024 kilobytes okay means what see 1 byte 1 kilobyte is 1 1024 bytes now megabyte 1 megabyte is equal to 1024 kilobytes means 1024 24 multiplied by 1024 you will get this amount <coughs> sorry 10 lakhs 48576 bytes <coughs> if you will do the multiplication and check you will get this uh, amount uh, this number now here 1 gigabyte is equal to 1024 megabytes so it is difficult but uh, you should remember this at least up to gigabytes you should uh, know this okay the computer's memory terabyte 1 terabyte is equal to 1024 gigabytes 1 petabyte is equal to 1024 terabytes 1 hexabyte is equal to 1024 petabyte 1 zettabyte is equal to 1024 exabyte 
1 yeta byte is equal to 1024 zeta byte and 1 brono, uh, uh, bronto byte is equal to 1024 yota byte and uh, geo gope byte is equal to it is 1024 bronto byte means if you will see in terms of bytes so many bytes you can see the calculation given here okay it is for you to uh, difficult to remember okay but at least up to tera gigabyte you try to understand how it is getting multiplied and so big memory computers nowadays computers are having so huge memory so you should get the idea of this how much huge memory computer has for this we will go further and see see kilobyte and megabyte one kilobyte that is 1024 bytes correct this is approximately equal to one page of a textbook okay normally all lines if all lines are written it is a one a page of the textbook approximately somewhat less or more megabyte one megabyte is 1024 kilobytes this is approximately equal to one book okay not very thick not very thin now gigabyte and terabyte one gigabyte is 1024 megabytes this is approximately equal to a bunch of books see images are given look at it one terabyte tb is 1024 gigabytes this is approximately equal to a entire book stand okay the picture of book stand is given now here next is petabyte one petabyte is 1024 uh, terabytes this is approximately equal to room full of books so many books okay that much capacity a computer memory is having okay the matter which which it can fit in in so many books can be fit in the computer's memory this is the huge memory computer is having okay now we'll go further and we'll study the memory in detail now primary memory Primary memory is often known as the working memory of the main memory of a computer. Okay, computer memory is called primary memory, secondary memory, which is there inside the hard disk, inside the CPU, which is there somewhat uh, from outside also you can extend the memory or you can have memory store, means storage devices. Okay, now here primary memory is of two types, volatile and non-volatile when the computer is turned off volatile memory loses its contents means when the computer is we were, we are switching off the computer what is there in the volatile memory it get lost okay now non-volatile memory that is nvm in contrast does not lose its contents when the computer is turned off it is getting saved permanently in the computer's memory it doesn't go from there okay it does not get deleted from there ram and rom are the two major types of primary memory see these technical things you have to learn properly pay attention then only you'll come to know properly okay they are made up of semiconductor material all these are electronic parts a computer cannot run without primary memory all the computers are having primary memory and this primary memory is of two types that is volatile and non-volatile volatile means where whenever we will switch off the computer the contents goes off whereas non-volatile means it's remained in the computer itself even though we'll switch off the computer okay now we'll go further and see something more about it that is 
random access memory. Two types of memory we'll, uh, we saw that is RAM and ROM. Out of that RAM we will study first. That is random access memory. This also called as main memory. It consists of memory chips that can be read from and written to by the processor and the other devices. We will try to understand what it means. When you turn on a computer, certain operating system files are loaded into the RAM from the storage devices such as hard disk. These files remain in RAM as long as the computer is on. Okay. Means what suppose you are uh, operating some, you want to open paint application or you want to open word application. That word application is stored in the uh, computer's hard disk and it is getting transferred from that hard disk to the RAM memory. And uh, on the uh, monitor, you, as per user uh, interface, the Word application uh, file will get open in front of you. The processor, that is CPU, interprets and executes a program or application instructions while the program or application is in RAM. During this time, the contents or RAM may change. RAM is a volatile memory. For this reason, you must save the items you may need in future. Saving is the process of copying items from RAM to the hard disk. See, suppose always you must have experience whenever you are coming to, uh, uh, you, whenever you used to come to computer lab, we used to tell you whatever work you have done, save it. Means what? Temporarily, whenever you are doing the work, that work, goes to the RAM. From the RAM, if you want to save the things, it will get copied on the hard disk. Means from there, you can retrieve the data afterwards also. After switching off the computer, whenever it is getting stored in the uh, hard disk, it will not get loose. You will not lose the data. Whatever is there in the RAM, but with, if you have not saved, whenever you switch off the computer, that data will go. It will not remain in computer's memory. Try to understand the things. Okay. Now, next is here. Program instructions transfer uh, instructions transfer in and out of RAM. The following steps show how program and application instructions transfer in and out of RAM. This is given on page number 19 in your book. Okay. Now, what it shows, what it explains, whenever you are starting the computer, after starting the computer, suppose uh, certain operating system files are loaded into the RAM from the hard disk, from the hard disk, the operating system displays the user interface on the screen. Okay. Now, next, second step, what it does? When you run a browser, the application instructions are loaded into the RAM from the hard disk. That such and such browser you want to open. The browser and certain operating system instructions are there, are in RAM. The browser window appears on the screen. And it has taken this browser instructions from the hard disk itself. When you run paint program, the program instructions are loaded into the RAM from the hard disk. The paint program along with the browser and certain operating system instructions is in the RAM. Two things are there in the RAM now. What is that? The operating system which you have, uh, which is uh, running and the uh, uh, paint program also. The paint pro window will also appear on the screen. Browser is there. Paint is there on the screen and same thing is there in the RAM also. When you exit an application such as the browser, if you are closing browser, its instructions are removed from the RAM. It is there in the hard disk, but it is getting removed from the RAM. The browser no longer is displayed on the screen. 
Suppose you are closing paint application, that paint application window will not be there on the uh, uh, screen and it will get removed from the RAM also. But it will remain on the hard disk because hard disk is a permanent memory, permanent storage. So, with this, we have come to an end of this uh, video. But in short, we will revise whatever we have learned. We have seen what is the function of a uh, human being memory. Correct. What functions it does. Why it is necessary. And then we saw the computer's memory. It is a primary memory. Every computer is having memory unit. And this memory unit, how it works. Who controls this memory unit. All that also we have seen through block diagram of computer. And then we saw the uh, majoring units for the memory, uh, memory, correct? That is 8 bits is equal to 1 byte. That is one character in computer, okay? Now we'll, uh, we saw the table. That is uh, how many uh, bytes, how many bytes together uh, becomes 1 kilobyte, how many kilobytes together becomes 1 megabyte, or gigabyte, tetrabyte, all the table we have seen. Okay, that is 1 byte is equal to 1 character. 1 kilobyte is equal to 1024 1, bytes. 1 megabyte is equal to 1024 kilobytes. 1 gigabyte is equal to 1024 megabyte. 1 tetrabyte is equal to 1024 gigabytes. And 1 petabyte is equal to 1024 terabytes. And we have seen 1 kilobyte is equal to what or 1 megabyte is equal to what. All that it is means uh, 1 page, 1 book. Like this uh, a huge computer is having a huge memory. Now the remaining part of the lesson we will I will try to cover in the second video. By then all of you go through the video properly. Try to follow the things which are explained here. If you have not got anything, please try to ask me in the live session. Okay then, bye, see you, take care.